Good morning and welcome to virtual Birmingham Unitarian Church. I am the Reverend Mandy Beal. I am this congregation's senior minister. I'm joined today by our co-directors of music ministry, Abha and Stephen Deering. Our services are typically on Sunday mornings at 1030, usually in the building, although not right now. Birmingham Unitarian Church is a welcoming congregation. That is a designation that a congregation can earn from the Unitarian Universalist Association by doing work and learning about being fully inclusive of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender and queer individuals and their families. We are also a Green Sanctuary Congregation, which is a similar designation for environmental justice. And although there is no such designation for racial justice, we are also deeply committed to that. Today is our first worship service using Zoom, and we have a few tips and requests. First, we'd like to ask that you please don't type any comments during this service. That will help everyone focus on what's happening. Second, we recommend that all participants use the speaker view. That will automatically make the person who's speaking window the largest on your screen. So that means that you also need to keep your window on mute. Otherwise, you will be the largest window on the screen. When you came into the space, you were on mute, and you should be able to stay that way throughout. Uh, Sarah Constantakis is also moderating our worship this morning, and she'll mute your uh, window for you. Uh, also, we um, want you to stay on mute during the hymns. So I know it can feel strange to kind of sing at the top of your lungs by yourself, but I found this really nice the other day because it meant that I could sing as loud as I wanted in whatever key I happened to be in. So I hope that you enjoyed that experience as well. <clears throat> oh, also your cameras are on. So remember, we need to, uh, to be dressed accordingly. <laughs> Today will be our first virtual coffee hour. After the service, you will be randomly sorted into breakout groups. We hope that you will participate in this opportunity to connect with others. If, our, if any of you are joining us online for the first time today, we extend a special welcome to you and we hope that you will stay and talk to some people, make some connections. Hmm. And just a quick mention of our folks who don't use the internet. Uh, please, if you know someone who doesn't use the internet, I ask that you give them a call. Also help us out by uh, adding them to the phone call list, which you can find at bucmi.org that will sign them up for phone calls and we can uh, check in on them and know how they're doing. <clears throat> Thank you again for joining us this morning or whenever you're watching this. Although we are not together physically, we are together in spirit and it is good to be together again. And with that, our worship service will begin. This morning's prelude is called Miami. It's by a French, uh, French Canadian composer, Gerard Montreal, for solo guitar, played by my co-director of music ministry, Stephen Dean. We worship together this morning 
in our separate homes, but we join with a multitude of Unitarian Universalist congregations. And in that, we will light our chalice. We light this chalice as a reminder that we are never really alone. We are brought together as a religious community to share in each other's burdens and to lift each other up. We are lights unto one another and we are companions on the journey of life. We'll join our, vo our voices now together in song. As a reminder, please leave your microphone on, on mute during our hymns. For our first hymn, Comfort Me, I'll give you all the words you need. So let's raise our voices in song and sing out big and strong. Comfort me. Comfort me. Comfort me. Comfort me, oh my soul. Comfort me. Comfort me, comfort me, oh my soul. Sing with me, sing with me, sing with me, sing with me, oh my soul. Sing with me. Sing with me, sing with me, oh my soul. Speak for me, speak for me, speak for me, speak for me, oh my soul. Speak for me. Speak for me, speak for me, oh my soul. The time has come in our service when we ask for your financial support. Our beloved community relies on the support of our members and our friends to provide worship services, religious education, our music program, and so much more. We all know that the coronavirus pandemic has impacted our personal finances and our country's economy. Our church is also deeply impacted by recent events and we need your help now more than ever. There is a link in the chat bar that will take you to our website, bucmi.org. If you already have an online account with us, please follow that link and click on the Donate Now button. If you need to set up an account with us, I urge you to do so after the service. You can also just put a check in the mail. We can't do what we do without your contributions, and I invite you to please give generously. Our offertory song, Shine, was composed by Ed Rowland of the band Collective Soul. Stephen arranged it acoustically for us to present to you today. Please do give generously as you enjoyed this song of hope. Thank you. 
We set aside time each week for prayer and reflection. We begin this time with a sharing of joys and sorrows. Joys and sorrows can be submitted online using the link that was provided in the most recent BUC shout out. But remember that if you submit a joy or sorrow through that portal, it will be shared in the space which is available to the public. Uh, one person has submitted a joy this morning one of our BUC staff members submitted a very kind expression of support for my leadership over the past few weeks. I'm not going to read that in detail. She was grateful for my leadership and I am grateful for the leadership of our staff, um, for their flexibility, the dedication. I'm really just amazed at what they've all been able to do over the past few weeks. I would also like to express a personal note of gratitude for our Board of Trustees and the COVID-19 Response Task Force. I'm grateful as well for our lay leaders who have taken on important roles in our virtual community. Amy Smalley, Teresa Honnold, Andrew Shrek, Allison Rule, and Heidi Kapsokavathis. Lastly, I want to thank Dr. Terrence Metz for hosting an online discussion about coronavirus for us yesterday. We have really come together in an amazing way as a community, and I'm so proud to be a part of that. I invite you now to further with me into a spirit of prayer and reflection. Spirit of life and love, spirit of community that holds us in times of confusion, in times of frustration, in times of sorrow. We will be brought through this together as one community. We will be brought through this together in our wholeness, in our unity. Keep that knowledge fresh in our minds. Let us remember that we are never alone. Let us remember each other. Let us be bold in reaching out to one another and leaning on one another during a time that might otherwise make us feel very lonely. Maybe so. Amen and blessed be. When I breathe in, I breathe in peace. When I breathe out, I breathe out love. When I breathe in, Out 
Before I begin the reading this morning, I just want to thank all of you. I think it might be a Unitarian Universalist miracle. There are a hundred people on here and you're all listening to the directions we gave you and you're not just chatting away and taking your phones off of mute. Well done. And thank you for your cooperation in that. <laughs> all right, our reading this morning uh, comes to us from the Sufi poet Rumi as translated by Coleman Barks. This is called The Guest House. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival. A joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all, even if they are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. As we've spent another week in coronavirus land, I have heard and read that many of us are feeling lonely and isolated. There are those who live alone and who crave physical and intellectual contact. Conversely, there are those among us who live in close quarters with our family and we need a break or at least a new voice in the conversation. And having a completely different experience are those who are still working. And that includes essential services like medical professionals who despite being praised for their extraordinary work and extraordinary times, still might feel excluded from the discourse and the culture that have popped up around the self quarantine experience. And my heart is especially with wage workers those who are going to their regular jobs but are not getting any recognition, people who work in retail, construction, food service, and more. I think especially of people working in grocery stores to stock food that they themselves cannot stock in their own home. Those who are compelled to leave their homes because their work demands it have voiced a sense of isolation because they feel invisible. Beyond these experiences of not leaving our home because it is the right thing to do or leaving our home because we are compelled to, there are others who are acting as if nothing is happening. People who are perhaps in denial about the situation or sincerely believe there is no situation, for whatever reason, they are out doing their thing, just living their best life and that minimizes the sense of isolation that so many of us feel and it can make us resentful. Our feelings of frustration, invisibility, and resentment are compounded by those who are turning coronavirus into a golden political opportunity. The federal government has said that governors are responsible for providing ventilators in their states. There are members of Congress who have made millions of dollars by selling stocks while refusing to pass relief packages. There are people who are attaching anti-abortion writers onto some pieces of legislation meant to provide relief. And there are others who are refusing to vote for those packages because they provide equal protection for same-sex partners as they do for everybody else. And a lot of us feel angry about that. It's easy to feel alone in coronavirus land. It comes naturally when there is a disruption in how we interact with one another. And adding frustration and visibility, resentment and anger to isolation only causes us to feel further removed from others. In our current crisis, we might feel the impulse to ignore or suppress difficult feelings because we're afraid to feel them 
in an already vulnerable state. Things are hard enough. We don't want to perseverate on difficulties. But here's what I know about difficult things. Suppressing them does not make them go away. Our truths will always find the sunlight with or without our conscious minds. One of the most time-honored metaphors for our emotional life is Rumi's guest house. In times of struggle, our emotional guest house is full to the rafters. It's full of visitors. We have emotional guests coming in faster than we're used to. We don't know where to put them all. We're meeting some guests for the first time. And we run short on coping skills, causing some guests to overstay their welcome and other more gentle guests, patience, generosity, compassion, they tend to check out early. The situation that's happening in our lives right now is not business as usual for ordinary innkeepers like us. It's like we're the only inn in town and then one day, a biker rally, a music festival, and a three ring circus all come at the same time. And our emotional guest houses are completely overwhelmed. We're doing our best to accommodate these rowdy and unpredictable guests. When we become so busy trying to manage the activity in our emotional guest house, the false message that we are alone is reinforced. Our hands are so full with the guests and just dealing with what's around us that we forget that every single one of us has a guest house and they are all full of the same difficult guests. This is the time, more than ever, that we need each other. We need to compare notes and to be reminded that what's happening inside of us, whatever it is, is normal. And it's happening to everyone we know. We are not alone. We are all going through this at the same time. Even if we're going through it in different ways or at different paces, the underlying experience is still the same. We share unruly emotional guests and we are brought together in our common best effort to manage their presence in our guest houses. There is so much to be gained in keeping up good relations with other innkeepers. Together, we can share best practices on how to cope with our guests. But perhaps more importantly, we can commiserate. Now is the time for each of us to reach out to each other. Social media is a, a good way to do this, but having actual human interaction is even better. Call someone, ask them how they are, tell them how you are. Please don't lose yourself to being frustrated resentful, invisible, or angry. These difficult emotional guests will come to stay with you at some point. You can count on that. And they will tell you that you are alone and that nobody cares about you. They will tell you that they should stay in your guest house forever. And honestly, dear ones, those emotions they have a right to be in your guest house. You should welcome and entertain them all, but they don't have the right to live there forever or to live there in secret or to live there without paying their rent. This Wednesday in our fireside chat, we'll talk a little bit more about when it's time for these guests to check out and how you can help them pack. But for today, please hear me say, that what is most important in this time 
is that you remember that you are not alone. That is a lie. Being alone is a lie. You are never alone. We are part of the same human family and we are sharing this human experience together. And we, as a faith community, we have given ourselves into mutual care and concern. We belong to each other and the time has come for us to keep each other close, closer than we ever have before. And that was already pretty close to start with. We can do that. We can hold each other up during this time. That's what we're here for. May it be so. Amen. And blessed be. It is in that spirit that I invite you to join in singing our closing hymn. As a reminder, please keep your microphone on mute. We are going to sing for all that is our life and a slide with the lyrics will appear on your screen. We'll sing the slide completely and then we'll go back and sing verse one at the end. For all that is our life, we sing our thanks and praise. For all life is a gift, which we are called to use to build the common And make our own days glad. For sorrow we must bear, for failures, pain, and loss. For each new thing we learn, for fearful hours that pass, we come with praise and thanks. For all that. For all that is our life, we sing our thanks and praise. For all life is a gift, which we are called to use to build the common good and make our own days Go now out into this week and take with you some of the hope and some of the joy that you have found here. Go out as messengers of the love that we share and the unity that is ours. May it be so. Amen and blessed be.